Okay, good. So here we go. Now we're going to be talking about practice again. All righty. So here we're going to be, today we're, one, one theme that's going to come up is opportunities and obstacles. So, um, and you know, a lot of this is going to hinge on the technique of turn towards or turn away. So, both turning towards and turning away are both actually mentalization skills, right? The skill to discipline yourself to look away and the skill to discipline yourself to, hey, I'm not going to look at this intentionally. Those are both important skills to develop both in meditation and for the rest of your life. So let's talk a little bit about examples of turn towards and turn away. So turn towards would be uh, maybe you're doing some sort of practice where you're trying to develop absorption and concentration. So like a jhana practice, which we've not covered in the class. So there you would want to turn towards and kind of get absorbed into pleasant experiences like uh, bliss, rapture, happiness, even the sensation of equanimity. So that would be a turn towards practice. Also, another example of a turn towards practice is let's just say, so Matt was talking earlier about how uh, he uh, kind of was beating himself up about falling. He, he went, hung out with uh, his friend, his practice fell away, and then he found himself beating himself up. So you could do a turn towards practice. So you could be like, and this is such a cool way to do this practice. You just repeat the thought over and over again to where you kind of almost uh, make it seem asinine. So here we go. So it's like, like, I'm such a piece of shit for not practicing. I'm such a piece of shit for not practicing. I'm such a piece of shit for not practicing. And like, keep bringing your attention to that actual thought and then by bringing your attention very intensely to it, it will start just falling away and breaking down into its component parts. So you'll start seeing how, oh my God, this is just an auditory thought. And then you can check in with the body. Oh, when I believe this thought, I'm such a piece of shit for letting the practice fall away. Then you will have like tension across the chest, across the shoulder, maybe in the back of the neck maybe in the face. And then you just see, aha, this is all just a bunch of sensory events. So this would be like a trigger practice of turning towards what's triggering. Really, really skillful. Um, so now let's talk about turn away. And I think the turn away is misunderstood. People think that this means denial. Um, so denial or suppression is not looking at something that you actually should. But this, this like actually discipline to be able to turn away is a really valuable, wholesome skill. So for example, if you're in a job interview and you just had a stressful conversation with your boyfriend, um, well, you want to be able to intentionally turn away from it and then bring your full attention to the uh, interview. And then, you know, thereafter you can go talk to a therapist, talk to your boyfriend, etc. And so that would be an example of, of turn away. So I would like this coming week for you all to play with the turn away and the turn towards aspects of practice and really understand that you're building up very important mentalization skills when you're doing that. Good. Okay, another aspect that I'd like to talk about is our accelerators. Um, so accelerators are, for example, so let's just say you, so these are ways to kind of like bump up your practice. So one is by sitting in stillness for longer periods of time. So maybe you could start out with saying, hey, listen, I'm, I'm meditating for 30 minutes and I just move a little bit. So now I'm going to set the intention to, to do a strong determination sit and not move whatsoever. And then when you've got that mastered, maybe you bump it up to 45 minutes of not moving and on and on and on. So this is really a way to kind of squeeze more out of your practice and get a higher return on investment from your practice. Um, so, and again, this is analogous to simply lifting heavier weights in the gym, right? Okay, good. Um, 
let's, okay, so other accelerators are actually trigger practice, which we've already partially covered. So you learn to bring the practice to something you find triggering. So maybe you watch the news and you watch your least favorite politician, and then you sit there and watch him, watch him, watch him, or watch her, and then you watch the triggering arising. You watch the aversive, kind of perseverating, angry thoughts arising, but you you just see them, you kind of apostinize them, you don't indulge them, etc. Another accelerator is movement practice or movement challenge, as Shinzen says. And this is, man, this is such a cool way to approach the practice. So let's just say you can really get absorbed doing a practice when you sit uh, in your formal meditation posture. So what you might try to do is sit in your formal meditation posture for 30 minutes. Then stand up and do a walking practice and see if you can maintain the same level of concentration and absorption that you were experiencing while you were doing the formal seated practice. Really, really good, really good way to approach the practice. Let's see here. Also, something else I'd like to talk about is, and this has to do with kind of skillful use of the practice and ways to integrate the practice into your daily lives. I would like to recommend that you track during daily life, that you track when you get triggered and then when you are emotionally dysregulated. And you can do that by, well, just simply noting your, the feeling states that are arising. So you could just use see, hear, feel to note that. And then pay attention to the unskillful ways that you um, regulate your, your emotions. So people either use like, you know, ignorance, so kind of a dissociation um, as, a, uh, as a coping mechanism. They use anger. So they'll have perseverating angry thoughts in order to actually feel better which is of course a very, it's effective in the uh, short term, but it's not effective in the long term, it's not skillful. Another, uh, another thing that they do is, and I've done a lot of this, is they have kind of greedy fantasies. So they, they, they don't feel good, so then they think about some sort of thing that they want, and they'll kind of perseverate on this greedy fantasy, which helps actually um, regulate the emotion. So, and now, man, if you do this practice, you will see such immediate benefits in your life. So try to notice when you get triggered. So notice when you get triggered. And then instead of engaging in dissociation, anger, or greed, try to either do Vipassana, so do the see, hear, feel practice, or you can even substitute in meta, or maybe even something like field rest. Okay, uh, so that's good advice. Let's see here. Now I'm just gonna mention just some random uh, comments that should be helpful with the uh, practice. This is just kind of a non sequitur comment, but I just want to mention this about pleasure, especially in Theravadan Buddhism and in some other kind of religious, maybe let's say more religiously oriented contemplative schools of thought. Pleasure is the enemy. And I think that that's actually dead wrong. Pleasure is perfectly fine and you, we should open up to it and actually learn to maximize it. But what we do want to do is learn to not have a relationship of craving with it. The craving is a problem. Pleasure itself is great. Also, in the same vein, desire is not a problem. If you desire something and you just experience the pure 
unalloyed, unabridged, just pure desire, not accompanied with suffering and craving, totally healthy. And I'll also say that desire and pleasure become, I would say, more trustworthy as you deepen on the path. Okay, all right, moving on here. Um, oh, another, and so again, you know, talking about kind of different ways to manage and, and integrate the practice. I think that something that's very valuable is to do bodies of work on just see, just hear and just feel. So maybe over the next week, I'm actually gonna make that explicit. Let's do some practice where we do only see. Like you do a full, let's say, 10 minute or 30 minute session of just see. So you can only pay attention to image thought. Then you can do another uh, round of practice where it's just here. You only are listening to your internal um, auditory experience or external auditory experience. And then there's just feel where you just notice the emotional body or the somatic body. Okay, all right, great. So let's, um, Let's wrap that up.